Hello and welcome to Seek Truth, Speak Truth. I hope you're enjoying your day wherever you are on our beautiful globe. I received this comment. It did make me laugh. I wish I was a shill, to be honest, but I'm not. I'm just a real truth seeker and I'm now finding out the real truth. We have gone to space you will deny space even exists being a flat earther. Come for a journey with STST and I will show you and explain people have died in the route to space exploration and three people have died in space. Today specifically I want to talk about the Challenger disaster from 1986. The shuttle was delivering a satellite or was going to did NASA make mistakes in the build-up? Did NASA try and push this too quickly? Did they try and get too much out of old shuttles? A man called Richard Feynman, my new hero, I discovered him like two days ago, was part of the public inquest into what happened had NASA tried to cover up their tracks. Why I find this interesting is because it shows that NASA is at the scrutiny of the American public and the world. You sitting in your bedroom saying space is fake, we didn't go to the moon, is just an opinion of someone sitting there on the internet. There's people out there in the real world that did question, have NASA messed this up? Have they caused the death of seven other people? And it looks highly likely that they had certainly not done enough, basically, to ensure that this was a safe mission. There's such thing as an O-ring, and what Feynman implied was that in ice cold, this rubber in the ring will not sort of expand and contract as it should, and the, sh the shuttle was allowed to be let lift lifted off in like freezing temperatures basically they were worried about going over their time limits this is why I find it so interesting NASA has tried to cover things up just like any company out there in the world but things get found out in the end no conspiracy so big with so many people involved can be that big it's just impossible this simple malfunction was soon found out about even though if you do look into Richard Feynman's investigation it, you will be able to find it on YouTube he obviously explains in much more detail that he believes a lot of the engineers and things didn't even dare talk to him because he found out that they were trying to cover things up Richard Feynman is a genius. He is one of the greatest minds like since Einstein. He would know if the the actual missions were fake and space was fake and do you know what I mean? It came down to an explosion where people actually died. A reason I want to mention Challenger secondly is because it is a big big conspiracy within flat earth that those seven astronauts are actually still alive today even though if you do double fact check they certainly are not they are all dead one of the people that is pushed as still alive is the brother of one of the astronauts and the other six just happen to look fairly similar and have similar names but they have different birth certificates different parents were brought, brought up in different parts of the world had different jobs at different times there's plenty of proof that those people did unfortunately die. I'll just show a short clip of the Challenger disaster. I'm sure you've probably seen it. It is a little bit distressing when you think obviously there are seven people on that shuttle. The night before the launch, Beaujolais repeated his warning. But with the previous shuttle having just set a record for delays, NASA's leaders were impatient. 
Beaujolais' bosses told NASA the O-ring evidence in the memo was inconclusive. Challenger's launch was ordered. A puff of black smoke at liftoff was the ominous sign that Beaujolais was right. The O-rings had already failed. The smoke appeared when they burned. After a few seconds, a jet of flame appeared. A post-accident report by NASA described it with passionless precision. The plume is seen here impinging directly onto the surface of the external tank and the lower aft strut at 60.248 seconds. The sideways flame burned like a welder's torch through the gap left by the blown O-rings. It pierced the giant orange fuel tank and fuel began streaming out. Still, no one knew anything was wrong. Not until Challenger, its astronauts, and its teacher in space had flown for 73 seconds. At 73.191 seconds, a flash was observed between the ET and orbiter that was immediately followed by the start of total vehicle breakup at 73.213 seconds. During the next 100 milliseconds, additional flashes occur in the SRB forward attach area. As the ET broke up, the released fluids vaporized rapidly, producing an expanding cloud of gases, vapors, and cryogenic fluid with embedded debris and localized combustion of mixed gases. No shock wave or other evidence of a violent explosion was detected in the imagery. Illumination from a combination of SRB plume radiance, reflected sunlight, and peripheral burning of gases gives the cloud the appearance of a fireball. By 73.6 seconds, the main engines were in automatic shutdown mode as a result of reduced propellant pressures. The last telemetry from Challenger was received 73.618 seconds after launch. The actual vehicle breakup was essentially obscured from view by the vapor cloud which abruptly enveloped the vehicle. Hundreds of fragments were noted exiting the ET cloud. Those identified included the shuttle main engines, the left wing, crew cabin, and both SRBs. What was happening to the crew at this moment? They were still alive. Challenge is fast. Launch is fast. It's bang. And then it's a two-minute ride down. And you're conscious. We know that. Astronaut Story Musgrave told me the crew survived in that white cloud. It was Challenger's fuel tank that exploded. The shuttle itself just broke apart. The crew compartment with its seven living occupants was intact. The initial path of the crew cabin from the vapor cloud carried it across the path of an adjacent contrail, clearly revealing its truncated form and attitude. The left wing became visible at 78.531 seconds. The main engines and crew cabin are also identifiable. It took two minutes and 45 seconds for the crew cabin to hit the water. The impact speed was 207 miles an hour. A NASA statement released after the accident reads, the forces to which the crew were exposed during orbiter breakup were probably not sufficient to cause death or serious injury. And later, NASA is unable to determine positively the cause of death of the Challenger astronauts, but has established that it is possible but not certain that the loss of consciousness did occur in the seconds following the orbiter breakup. So you flat earthers deny space whilst some of the greatest people on this earth are actually risking their own lives to further and better humanity. People are thinking about the future, thinking about what if a big asteroid does come at us and we've got two years notice, can we quickly go and colonise Mars? There's people thinking that far ahead for humanity's sake, even if they know themselves they'll be long dead before it's ever needed. That's what you call a real human, in my opinion. There was another disaster called the Columbia disaster, another space shuttle flight. Each time one of these happens, these have, that has then grounded the missions for two and a half years. So, oh, you know, are they really faking all of this? Not doing missions for two and a half years because they've made a problem and now working out how to fix it. It is so sad that you guys go down that route. This isn't all made up for you. Do you really think you're that special if you're a flat earther or a truth seeker? That you are the reason why these lies are made up? There's some very, very powerful people out there that have no affiliation with any government whatsoever 
and some of them with the money they have probably more powerful than some small governments why don't they come out and say it's all a lie why is it not being horrible people sitting on their phones having a crap that's your research is it that's how you know you're the most woke mind and you're not the sheeple it's really sad I think I will possibly speak about this a couple more times again because I've become really fascinated now with space flight now I know it's actually real a bit of a crude joke but I imagine especially these male astronauts because they would have to be male to have a bollock but their bollock singly is bigger than your whole brain I'm sorry but I'm just going to start saying it as it really is. You're not that special. I thought I was that special. I thought that I'd learnt it all. Flat Earth is the easy route out. It's the easy way. Oh, we already know. Yeah, we know that. We know that. No, you don't. There weren't some man clicked his fingers and whoop de doo da. There's a lot of science out there and people are working this all out. Well, are you going to devolve or evolve with the rest of us? I am in that us category now. But enjoy your day, whoever you are. I just want flat earthers to know that they are wrong. Stay safe and keep it global. What you giving, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe.